Hi right, guys, welcome back to another video and today I am on Hury. Now, Hury is one of the reservoirs that help look after uh, as part of the Northumbrian Water Ranger team. Uh, Hury is one of our fly only waters. It is stocked with rainbows as well as has uh, a population of wild brownies. Um, I'm very lucky, you know, I work at these places and I get to keep in touch with what's happening and there is a fantastic dry fly um, pattern on at the moment. So I'm going to nip over just for a couple of hours in the afternoon. Um, I've let the majority of the day to get anglers sort of leave. I'm just going to nip in, have a little wander along the down wall because I've seen a few fish rise there and uh, just see if I can nip one or two fish. Um, this video is more of a personal challenge than anything else. Uh, some of you know I fished a fly fishing uh, competition in Wales a couple of weeks ago by the time this video comes out. And I found myself very nearly out of place. Now, I fly fished for a long time. I wouldn't call myself a good fly angler. Uh, I'm competent, I get by, I can do what I know what to do, but I have my limitations. Um, one of my limitations is dry fly fishing. Coming from Essex, uh, and especially on Hanningfield, there's not much of a dry fly uh, action or any sort of pattern to fish. So I just haven't done much of it. So I'm not very experienced. I can probably count on two hands how, how many rainbows I've caught on dries in my life. So now living in the Northeast, there's a bit more of a dry fly uh, scene when it comes to the reservoirs and with the bite on at the moment uh, there's a whole fawn uh, hatch happening recently and they're getting on the water and the trout are absolutely, trout are absolutely gorging on them there's also uh, some crane flies like daddies and uh, i've seen a sedge today as well i've two or three sedge today so there's a few options i don't think they'll be that picky about what i'm using i'm, I'm not a very good fl uh, dry fly angler so i'm just going to pick the flies that a i can see and a i can fish and b i can fish effectively um but uh yeah we're gonna give it a couple of hours and see what we can get on them uh i've got my saint croix imperial 10 foot seven weight now it's not often my first choice of rod when it comes to reservoir fishing because um it's not really built um marketed at the sort of british reservoir market for your usual stuff you know pulling lure style flies and things like that it's a bit more of a through action rod um built for sort of river and stream fishing in america and sort of still waters and it just suits that sort of fishing a bit better but where it is absolutely at home and perfect is for buzzer and dry fly fishing so when it comes to dries it comes to buzzer fishing this is my absolute go-to so i'm going to see if i can get put a bend in it and uh catch a fish or two so dry flies are ready let's see if we can catch them Yes. I think this fish really knows his hooked yet. Nearly ready, I think. Here it comes. And there is one to the net. Lovely. All right, we'll get this fish. Go a quick look at it. Let's get it back nice and quick. Okay. Leave the fish in the net. Let's 
fibrous silk, so it should just pop out. I'll get the right angle on it. The fish sits still. Right in the corner of the mouth, exactly where you want it. Right, is that fish unhooked? There it goes. Lovely stuff. It's a fish tracking this way. I've watched it take two or three flies up the same line. So it's just sit for a minute. It's still there. Just needs to head this way. Still coming. Come on, keep going. Let's come back another 10 yards. I'm not going to chase it yet. I'm going to wait. See if it comes to me. Yeah. It's closer. It's closer. Here it comes. Still there. Come on. It's got to be. Oh. Oh. I had the opportunity then. Okay, I'll just cast back up that line. Just another fish tracking that wind edge. Not the best to cast, but it will do. There we go. Oh, what is going on? Cast it. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, it's come off. Oh, well. Best bit about dry fly fishing is to bite. I don't actually want to mess around unhooking them. So we'll take that. I've just switched flies so it's a little bit bigger, not for any other reason, I was so I could see it. Um, my eyesight apparently isn't great in this little ripple with dry flies, I'm not exactly keyed in on it. Um, and it keeps sinking without me knowing. I think this is more of a sedge imitation. I did see a few sedge earlier, so there's a few around. Got a lovely wind now. Just going down this this bank, so I can sort of cast at an angle and just let it swing in. Okay, looks like I have to cut my session short a little bit. Um, I've just got a phone call from my wife. My youngest son has managed to do a face plant off his scooter in the street uh, and possibly has broken his nose. So, kids, eh? Uh, so we're gonna call this a little bit short. But I think rather than make this a very short video, I'm gonna make this into, I'm gonna do this over a couple of days. So we'll call this the end of part one and the next time you should see me, I should be back with a rod in my hand and a bit more dry fly action. Let's do it. Just like that, we are back. We are back at Hury and same story. We've got uh, an hour, maybe two hours, try and nick one or two off the top. Uh, for any of you that are wondering, my son was fine. Uh, he did take a bit of a nosedive over the handlebars of his scooter, but uh, a few scuffs and uh, scrapes and swollen lip. Nothing he won't survive. Um, so yeah, back to the fishing. So we can get one, one or two more fish on dry flies and improve my own angling at the same time. Let's do it. There we go. Ah, oh, that's not a bad start. I 
okay, I'm going to change my fly. I had two or three rejections. Um, and there's plenty of fish about, so I think I need to adapt. I can get hold of the bloody thing. Oh! Snap me off. Yes. Wee. <laughs> I would hazard a guess. This is a blue. blue. Right, come on now, let's have enough of this. Let's come in. Now it is in fact a rainbow, just a energetic one. Ugh, right. Come on now, mate, calm down. Let's get the forceps out. Um, there's my fry right in front of his mouth. Come on now. There you go, hooks out. Let the fish recover a little bit. Stand up myself. There you go, there you guys. Well, it does seem like there's no audio for the rest of this video, which is ridiculous and fantastic. 
Um, but what you wouldn't have seen or wouldn't be hearing right now is me chuckling to myself about this fish I've hooked and why we've come in mid-fight. Uh, I forgot to turn the GoPro on, so that was uh, mistake number one. I had made a cast and the top two sections of my four-section rod went disappearing into the reservoir along with my line. Um, I was stripping it back in to, to bring the rest of the rod back and the fish took my dry fly as I was sitting on the surface. Um, so <laughs> I was laughing to myself how someone that's incapable of me, uh, as me, can still catch these trout. They must be quite stupid or just particularly in the mood. Um, got the fish to the net quite quickly uh, and here is the next mistake. You'll notice if you watch carefully, as I turn to lay my rod down, I dropped to the front of the net. Oh no, no fish. All right, let's pick that rod back up because I've just to play this fish again now. How this fish stay pinned, I don't know. You know, all the fish you lose, the fish is rose in the background there. Uh, and this one managed to stay on. I've got no idea how. Um, so I've got to net it twice. This time it's in the net. And I think I said something along the lines of, right, I'm not going to let it go again. Um, and then I had the task of unhooking. Um, something that I've struggled with, actually, on, on fishing off a damn wall here. You know, obviously, I'm fishing catch and release. I'm trying to... Um, treat these fish as well as possible and keep them in as good a state as possible but obviously I can't wade so I can't get in the water to unhook them so I'm having to stand on the concrete so where possible just lift the net and unhook them and then tip them back but yeah any solutions to that maybe maybe I need to take an unhooking mat and just keep it wet and just keep it beside me on the wall I think that's probably the best option um, because as you can see I'm still struggling a little bit here the fish is in the water the fish is fine um, I'm just it's more me and I'm a bit precarious about sliding down the wall um, so anyway there we go and I'm going to actually dip the net for real this time give the fish a little bit of a nudge and off it goes ok I think you guys have to get used to the sound of my voice for the rest of this video I mean it's what you would have been hearing anyway uh, so I made an absolutely awful cast fish had one go at it fish had two go at it and there we go, on the third try. I mean, I, I was just either severely lucky on this day or the fish was suicidal, and it's probably a mixture of both. Uh, I think I'd just switch to a little black hopper with a little bit of red in it. Um, I'd been using fairly large flies up until that point, sort of like foam daddies and sort of sedge patterns, mainly for my own benefit so I could see them a little bit better um, and keep them on top. Having a lot of trouble with, with my flies, especially after I had a fish just um, dipping below the surface and sinking. Um, and I got sick of it, so I was just using the bigger, more buoyant flies. And the fish didn't seem to mind. But I did go a little bit finicky, and I wonder if it was the brightness and the flat the flat calm. They seemed to be keyed in on a smaller, a smaller hatch, so I switched to a little small black hopper. And um, you can see that fish really wanted it. It had three goes at it. I had three chances to set the hook and, and manage it on the third time. Um, I tried to give these fish a fair bit of strain uh, I don't want to fight them for too long so I'm releasing them I don't want them knacking themselves out so I try and get them to the, to the net as sort of quickly as possible really um, without absolutely wrenching them in and having a little bit of fun on the way uh, and here we go, I'm going to try and do my, my trick of unhooking again without falling in um, I found sort of taking a knee was my best my best uh, tactic and let the fish calm down a little bit. Um, I could get my forceps cut caught in the net. I think my net is probably a little bit deep for this as well. For if it was a bit shallow, I'd probably find it a bit easier. Um, so any recommendations on a nice shallow net with a long handle would be good. Uh, so just use forceps to nip out that fly, which has got wrapped around the back of it. So I've got to move it again. But like I say, the fish has never left the water. Um, and then just move it out into a little bit more depth just to recover. And you can see this fish is more than ready to go back. It's pulling against the net. And I'm just going to turn it inside out. And the fish does what they always do and swims the wrong way. So I'm just going to tip it out in a second, I think. Yep. There we go. And you can see the fish swim off. Lovely. Well, it's been rather successful so far. I think I've had four or five fish and, and lost a couple as well, you know. Um, got broke off a couple of times. Had loads of rejections. I'm absolutely positive a good dry fly angler. I've absolutely smashed the granny out of them. Uh, I think I'm going to try and catch one more fish and then call it a day. Um, I'm starving. I've been working all day. Get home and have me tea. So one more fish and we'll wind it up. Okay, by this point I was pretty much done. Um, I just lost another fish just 
just prior to this, um, ripped the rod out of my hand and broke me off on the take. And I was just saying, you know, one more fish and I'd be happy to go home. And there we go, there it is. The fish had pretty much stopped rising at this point. There wasn't a lot showing, so I was quite happy uh, to leave after one more fish. And it had taken me quite a while to get this last one. Um, they'd gone... There were still a few fish knocking around, and but they just wasn't, they wasn't as confident as before. I don't know whether the, the fact it had gone really slick, calm, it probably didn't help. Um, but I was on these like smaller flies at this point. Um, the small sort of hoppery type things rather than the large sort of flamboyant foam daddies and you know the larger sedge patterns which earlier in the day and the previous session from a couple of days before they was all over um, bearing in mind they'd been targeted by anglers a lot over the, those few days it was good sort of conditions for a few days and a few people were on them um, so they had been hammered a little bit so I'm, I'm guessing they just switched off a little bit uh, just dropped back and were a little bit more hesitant to take those sort of larger patterns which is where the varying up comes into it and you know the whole point of this video is to show that I don't class myself as a good dry fly angler um, I don't class, class myself as a good fly angler full stop uh, but I do enjoy it and I want to get better at it and it just, just shows that the fish are there to caught if you go and do it you haven't got to be world class to catch these fish um, you just have to go out there and try and uh, do different things and you'll learn how you like to do it. And, um, you know, this was a good session for me because I lost a few fish, which is quite valuable sometimes. You learn things from lost fish um, and I learned some things that day. Um, and the switching of the flies was really important. Uh, it's not something that I, you know, I don't do enough of this dry fly fishing to, to know loads about what they're eating and how to present it and you know that sort of thing so just chopping and changing as a fish just rose behind that one just to prove me wrong uh, chopping and changing you know pays off and uh, that was quite a quite a good fight from that probably one of the better fights i think um a lovely long fish big full tail on it um yuri has been the star if you ask me of the uh, northumbrian water uh, reservoirs this season he's been fishing fantastically all the way through um, and you know it's been supported really well by the local community of uh, fly anglers so it was good for me to to get out and finally catch a few fish from there after seeing so many anglers and how they were doing uh, so once again just unhook that fish in the net just pop the fly out in fact i think the fish actually popped it off out of its own mouth in the net um in the end of this you know it's the beauty of the barbless hooks and uh yeah you see that fish is ready and ready to go lovely long fish quite a big one that one um you know, not not the monsters that are in Huri, but for me, it was you know a good fish for a draw on a dry fly. I haven't so I haven't caught that many. So each each one is sort of a step up in uh, what I'm learning. And uh, once again, it's it freshes like nuts. And uh, turn it over and away it goes. Okay, and that is the session done. Um, I think I topped up with five or six fish. Um, way more opportunities in that as well uh, I mean I broke off on three um, no idea how or why just didn't gone um, two of them were on the takes so this must have been violent takes using the new leader material so I'm convinced maybe I'll switch back to what I know um, yeah dry fly fishing reservoirs uh, it's a new thing for me I absolutely suck at it uh, there's no getting away from that uh, a better angler would have done much better than me but we do these things to improve so my target this year is to get adequate at it. At the moment, I'd say I'm not even adequate on beginner level. Uh, by the end of the year, I want to be okay, uh, and we can go up from there. And it's just adding strings to your bow, you know. Uh, add more things in your arsenal, the more useful it might be in the future. So we're going to wind it up there. If you want to see me do videos where I put myself out of my comfort zone a bit, let me know. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. You know, still a vast majority of you watching these videos who aren't subscribed, and it means a lot to me when you do. So please do. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.